It's the Mixed Martial Arts Hour with The Mixed Martial Arts Hour back in your life on this Monday, June 20th, 2016. Hello again, everyone. I'm Mario Hawani inside our New York City studio. Beautiful day here in New York, a beautiful weekend. Happy Father's Day to all the great fathers out there who watch or listen to this show on a weekly basis. What a great day I had yesterday with my kids, my wonderful sons, Oliver and Walter. Beautiful Father's Day. And of course, congratulations to the great fans in Cleveland and all around Ohio for their Cleveland Cavaliers finally winning the NBA championship. The suffering is over. Yay. The whining is over. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. I'm very happy for you guys. It was a great moment. One of the greatest sporting events that I've ever witnessed. Congratulations to longtime Cleveland Cavaliers fan, New York Rick, who's in the back, who's thinking of even changing his name to Cleveland Rick after what happened last night. He's on cloud nine. We'll be hearing from him later on. I can't wait for that. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, but of course, a big weekend in mixed martial arts. The much anticipated Wonder Boy Thompson versus Roy McDonald fight happened in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. And surprisingly to me, some people didn't like this fight. I loved it. I thought it was fascinating. Yeah, it was a little technical, a chess match, if you will, but I cannot look away, even though it was happening at like 2.30 a.m. Eastern time. I'm joking, around 1.30 a.m. Still an ungodly hour, especially locally, geez. Those poor fans. And I hear there was no air conditioning. What the heck? Um, but ultimately, it was won by Wonderboy Thompson. I had it four rounds to one. He cements his place atop the welterweight division. In my opinion, he has done enough. He should not take any other fight. If it's not for the belt, he should be fighting the winner of Robbie Lawler versus Tyron Woodley. You beat Rory McDonald, especially like that, that dominantly, you deserve a title fight, especially when you consider the fact that he just annihilated Johnny Hendricks. Rory, where does he go from here? We'll discuss that later on in the show as well. He is now a free agent. He bet on himself, did not win, but I still think he is he is a hot commodity in this sport. Uh, other notable victories on the card, Cowboy Cerrone defeating Patrick Cote at 170 pounds. How about Joanne Calderwood getting back to her old self with a big win over Valerie Letourneau? Some strange refereeing in that fight though talk about that too and how about steve bosse defeating sean o'connell almost finished in the first round comes back and wins an amazing fight one of the best fights of the year by far uh had a feeling it would be fun those two are just a lot of fun to watch so there were some notable results some great performances on saturday and of course i have to mention friday in St. Petersburg, Russia, we had Fyodor Milenko defeating Fabio Maldonado in a controversial fight. Anyone who thinks that Fyodor won that fight hands down, um, I mean, you're just, you're, you're blinded by your love of him, and, and I get that, but that was a draw at best for Fyodor. It should have been uh, a 10-8 first round for Fabio, and then the next two, I concede, can go his way. One judge, a female judge, had it 28-28. The others had it for Emilianenko and uh, just can't see that happening, though uh, still very much interested in fighting and seeing him fight in the UFC. I don't care what happened in that fight. Just the sight of him fighting in the UFC. There are a lot of lesser talented heavyweights um, right now in the UFC. Anyone who says that they don't want to see him in the UFC, you will all watch, I guarantee, if he actually does sign with the promotion. So that happened on Friday, and we have, will, of course, talk about that. Bellator had a show, World Series of Fighting had a show, Bellator is back on Friday. A lot going on, as always. Let me run down today's show and get to our first guest, because he was in the news as well this past week. Uh, at around 4.10 p.m., we'll be joined by the great George St. Pierre. You may recall that last week on the program, he was in the news. We talked to Michael Bisping about him, and, uh, well, there's a lot to talk to George about, so I look forward to talking to him about, of course, his three loves. If I remember correctly, it was women, dinosaurs, and the violence of the octagon, so... Stay tuned for that. Uh, at around 3.05, we'll take your questions and comments. You know how to hit us up. 2.45, we'll talk to Chris Cyborg. I haven't talked to Chris since her big win at UFC 198. So looking forward to that very much. Ask her what's next. 2.25, our own Dave Meltzer, who's been all over this UFC sales story. Um, we'll talk to him about that. And of course, 
talk to him about what happened in Ottawa, what's to come, etc. 205, we'll talk to Luke Rockhold about his loss at 199 and where he goes from here. Frankie Perez will stop by. Remember him? He retired last August out of the blue. Young guy. Uh, he has some news to share at 145, 125. Fabricio Verdun will stop by to talk about life after the heavyweight title. But first, let us go to the Skype machine and welcome in a guy who had a big week last week. Will Brooks is now the newest member of the UFC's lightweight division. He makes his debut on July 8th against Ross Pearson in Las Vegas. There he is. Very happy man, Will Brooks, joining us on the Skype machine right now. Will, how are you? I'm good, man. I'm amazing, bro. I'm blessed. How are you? <laughs> I, I'm doing well. A happy Father's Day to you. I know you're a, a new father, so I'm sure it was a very special day for you and your family and a very special week because you signed with the UFC. Now, I want to go back to Wednesday. You were a free man come June 15th. For some reason, you had to uh, sit on the sidelines a little bit after you were released or parted ways from Bellator. When did the first call come in on June 15th? Was it like an NBA free agency thing where they called you at midnight? How did this go down? How did it start? <laughs> it was my, I think my manager reached out to me and told me, that just be ready. He actually reached out to me at midnight. He was like, be ready for Wednesday. So I was like, all right, cool. We woke up Wednesday. Me and my fiance woke up Wednesday. He was like, all right, let, waiting on a phone call. And then uh, my manager texted me was like listen we're moving things are moving in the right direction so we should be done with this pretty quick he didn't really tell me who it was with until oh. maybe later and i was like all right well what's going on and he was like yeah it looks like we're going to be signing with the ufc and i was like wait i thought he was like i thought he would just mess around because that's the type of dude he is man he likes to mess with people but uh it, it was a crazy process. Yeah, of course, you're talking about Monty Cox, longtime manager in this game, an OG, yeah. I believe uh, I referred to him as the last time you were on. Um, what were the emotions Monday, Tuesday, as you were approaching June 15th? Were you starting to get nervous, anxious? Were you worried the offer wouldn't come in? What were you thinking at that point? Yeah, man, it was it was a lot of touch and go type of feelings. You know, it was like, man, it, it, did I do the right things? Did I make the right decisions? Did I roll the dice? Because I, I did I did I make the the right decision taking a risk that I took, you know, and um, just a lot of different emotions, questioning things, you know. And I have to be honest, it was fear, it was self doubt, it was it was confident and being uh, being sure that it was going to happen. It was all mixed up, but uh, you know, I just held strong. My fiance held strong with me, and uh, you know, we just kind of put it out there. We're just like, whatever happens, happens, you know. Can you explain to us why you had to wait until June fifteenth to talk to people? Not really. I mean, it is what it is. You know, I've moved forward. You know, I can't really go back and change any of uh, any of that stuff right now. I'm just trying to be uh, be the best UFC lightweight fighter I could possibly be and move forward. You know, and be a, a, a new Will Brooks. You know, so the past is a past, and I'm not worried about any of it. It's still a little surreal for me to hear you say be the best UFC lightweight fighter because I've associated you and your face for so long with Bellator. Does it feel real to you now? Yeah, man. I mean, it, it kind of, it, it felt real the day I signed the contract, you know, just because that's how I am. You know, I like, I like to flip, I can flip the switch pretty quickly. You know, I've always been pretty good with that. So, um, you know, once the initial news came in and my management reached out to me and let me know that, hey, the contract is coming through. We got everything put together and it's, it's really going to happen. That felt surreal. But then once I signed the contract and I realized that I got to get ready to fight Ross Pearson, you know, I, I switched over to whatever, man. It's time to go to work. So um, I had... I, I, I'm just back to business, you know? Did you or your manager, uh, Monty, did you guys talk to any other promotions out there? Because I know there was some interest in you from these other promotions. Yeah, honestly, I couldn't tell you. I think it was more like, I think it was all of him, you know, my management. We had uh, we had an understanding of what I wanted to do. I, you know, I let him know and I let everybody know. I wanted to try to get into the UFC and if that was going to work, then great. If not, then, you know, I'm open to fighting wherever I go and I'll give them the best Will Brooks that I could possibly give them. But uh, I'm sure he went back and forth with whatever he was doing and, you know, just the things worked out to put me in with the UFC. So we jumped on it, you know, so it is what it is. So in hindsight now, and obviously, you know, the UFC had interest in you because they signed you. Uh, do you think that you could have gotten more money if you didn't tell the world where you wanted to go from a negotiation standpoint? Uh, I guess, I mean, sure. I, I, I have to be honest with you, probably. I mean, it, that... That's part of the business also is the money, the money part of it all, you know, but I guess it's just something that I never really 
been too crazy about and I get that we all need money to pay bills and we need money to take care of our lives you know but I've said it multiple times I come from a family of money was never in abundance for us you know we were always struggling we were always doing whatever we could do to get by you know so we at a me and my siblings and even my parents they we got used to the idea money wasn't that important but you know I got the money that it feels good to me, you know, and there's always room to build up and guys forget that, you know, you go out there and start winning, you put bodies on the ground and you win, you get the $50,000 bonuses, all these different things and you fuck, excuse my language, (laughs) you mess around and you get a gold title around your waist and then you're in the money, you know, you start moving, you start moving the numbers in the direction that you want to go in. So it is what it is. So, okay. So you go from being the Bellator lightweight champion, you have very impressive uh, wins, dominant wins on your resume. And, you know, when we were thinking, okay, if he does get signed by the UFC, where does he come in? You know, does he fight one of the top three guys? Does he fight a Tony Ferguson or a Khabib Nurmagomedov or does he work his way up? They offer you Ross Pearson, tough fighter, veteran fighter, gritty fighter, but not in the top 10. Were you okay with this offer right off the bat? Did you like the idea of fighting him in your UFC debut or did you want a bigger name, a higher ranked guy? I, I definitely wanted a higher ranked guy, but, you know, I, I sat back and I started thinking and just having conversations with my management. We just realized I haven't fought since November 6th of last year. Mm-hmm. So it was one of those things where it was like, man, do you want to go in here and try to fight one of these top 10 guys? And, you know, off of seven months being off and really not training and really going through a lot of different things in my life, you know, with the baby and transitioning to a new home, I haven't been able to train the way I wanted to, you know, so... Um, we just had to make a decision on what would work best. And uh, I guess, you know, we decided that this would be the best opportunity to get in there, uh, compete against a veteran in the sport and not have too much pressure on myself, but uh, just ease my way into it. So it's something I'm comfortable with. Okay. How about fighting on like two and a half weeks notice or so? Would you have preferred more time? No, I, um, I mean, I, I'm always in shape. Like, yeah. That's the one thing I will always make sure I'm in shape. Like, if I'm not in the gym, I'm at home, I'm working out, I'm doing something, I'm working on my cardio, I'm shadow boxing, I'm doing something active to make sure that when I do get into the gym, I can fight guys on short notice, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, whatever, uh, days notice, whatever, I'll be ready to go. Just got to cut weight and make the weight. So, um, you know, right now it's just kind of adding up my workload, adding on to my workload and the things just worked out. You know, my strength and conditioning coach just came back out here to help Robbie get ready for his training camp. So everything just kind of came together. So we were just like, you know what? This might be the way it's supposed to be. So I just went with it. And aren't you getting married like a week or so after the fight anyway? <laughs> yeah, I'm getting married July 16th. Yeah, Crazy. A week and a half right after. So, you know, it is what it is, man. It, it, it would have either been this or I could have tried to wait until July 23rd to see if somebody – you know, maybe fell off that card or maybe wait to fight in August. But um, I'm just ready to go, man. I, I, I'm i ready. I can feel it in my bones. I'm ready to compete. And that's just, I got to get back to work, you know. It kind of feels perfect. I mean, if all goes well for you on the 8th, my birthday, by the way, just, you know, if you, you, know, if you care. <laughs> um, and then you get to celebrate on your wedding day eight days later. I mean, I, th- th- yeah. this is a pretty amazing scenario. Yeah, man, this is how I like it. But I like I like having everything bunched together. It's, it's a little bit of a, a little bit of chaos for me, and that's why I've always done my best, you know, under pressure, under chaos, when this and that is going on, when schedules have to be flipped around and changed, and all this craziness is uh, taking place, and I have to adapt and change and uh, be able to handle it all. So I actually I appreciate and I like the where I'm at right now. And, and I look forward to it. I, I think it's going to bring the best Will Brooks out. Dana White in the past and other people have talked about octagon jitters, this thing called octagon jitters. And we've seen it. We've seen great fighters have amazing careers come to the UFC and especially in their first fight, just sort of freeze. I mean, it kind of happened to Eddie Alvarez against Cerrone, although he fought a very game Cerrone. I mean, the point is we've seen it before. Have you talked to anyone about this yet? Are you expecting to not be, a, you know, because the bright lights, Vegas, UFC 200 week, that's that's a lot different from some of the events that you were at in Bellator. How are you going to handle all that as a, as a person? How do you think you'll handle it? I'm going to handle it just fine, man. I'm going to show up and take care of business. I love this, man. I, th- this is one of the reasons why 
I sacrificed what I did when I turned down a contract that I turned down with my previous employer. Uh, I want the big lights. I want to be in the spotlight. I want to be in that that stage where there's so many eyes on you. There's so many like there's so many media outlets. There's so much going on. I want to be a part of that. I think I deserve that. I think that my personality and what I bring to the table fits that type of that landscape. So going into this is going to be fine, man. It's just another day at the office for me, man. It's mm. just I, I for me, I'm I'm. I'm effing excited, you know, I want this. I want to be a part of this and I've made the sacrifices to be here. So there is no time to have jitters and all this different stuff. You got to go in there and compete. I heard the initial plan was for Dana White himself to call you and sort of welcome you to the UFC. Did that happen? Yeah, I did. What was that like? It was weird, man. It was was crazy because I was getting random calls that whole day from like the, the UFC um, you know, people organize things and getting paperwork in and stuff like that. And so I was just getting random calls and then my management was like, all right, well, um, the UFC's PR agent is supposed to call you. So I'm waiting around. I was like, all right, cause I don't want to miss anything. I don't want to be a, I don't want to be a bad employee. All right, sure. I'm <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm sitting here and this random call comes in and I'm like, all right, cool. I answer it. And they were like, and he was like, what's up, Will? And I was like, hey, what's going on, man? This is, this is Will Brooks. And I thought it was a PR agent. I didn't even recognize his voice. And he was like, hey, this is Dana. And I was like, wait, what? what the? And I like, flipped out, man. But uh, I didn't even give him a chance to talk, man. I was losing my mind. You know, I'm like, bro, like, listen, I was just telling him what I want to do, man. I don't even think he got a chance to talk. But uh, it was just crazy to have him on my phone, you know? So, wow. It was uh, it was crazy, yeah. Do you remember anything that he said to you? Not really, man. <laughs> Not really. Like, I was just tripping. I was so I was I was ready to get off the phone with him and call my fiance and like, bad. like I just I was on the phone with Dan White just now. Like I I like I know like I remember parts of it but like nothing like in great right. detail that I could share, you know, but uh it was crazy. How did you celebrate that day? Uh I'll be honest, man, I, I um I got home and I, I broke down in tears, man. Uh, it, it's been a long time coming, man. I've made a, a lot of sacrifices and a lot of things that I've had to go through in my personal life that not a lot of people know about in the media and in uh, the fans and things like that. So um, I came home, I saw my fiance, she was jumping up and down, laughing and smiling, so excited. And I just grabbed her and started crying, man. It was just like, man, it's I'm getting emotional right now. I won't, I won't lie, my eyes are getting watered up, but uh, it was just, I did that, broke down, and then I flipped the switch and was like, let's go to work. I had to go to the gym and get ready. What, what sacrifices are you talking about? Can you share some of them with us? Man, I've I've had uh, so many people. Sorry, man. I'm no, sorry. it's all good. Um, I've had family members give up a lot of their time, a lot of their money. I've had people walk out on me, turn their backs on me during the whole process. I've, uh, I, I've, I slept in my car for a year and a half for, uh, just, just to turn pro when I first started this, you know, and, uh, just a lot of ups and downs, man, and, like battling with different people, fighting through different things and just all like never really thinking that it was ever going to happen, you know? And, um, just important people that I wanted to be here. A woman, uh, Lori Jekyll, that meant a lot to me. Uh, she was like a mother to me for years of my life during the most important parts of my life. And just wish she could be here to, you know, take part in all this and just, just craziness, man. I, I, I'm so emotional right now. I can't put everything in order, but, uh, Man, I just, I tell you this, I shouldn't be here, to be honest. I shouldn't be here. I, like I said, I sacrificed a lot, went through a lot of dark times. And I thought about putting myself in the ground a few times, you know what I'm saying? And, but I'm here, and it's just a crazy thing, and now it's time to go to work. So there's, there is no more time to worry about any of that stuff. It's just time to focus up, you know. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, where is Lori now? She passed away. She okay. passed away. February of 2011, she passed away. Okay. And, um, she was a huge deal to me, man. And that's all I, that's, 
that's all I think about all the time. It's like, man, I got this brand new baby. I got a house. I got, I'm having. I got a kid. I'm getting married, and you know, she was one of the people that I really wanted to, to have here to be able to witness this, you know. And just some of the things my my biological parents have gone through. You know, my dad has been through prison. He's been through the jail system, drugs, alcohol addiction, addiction. My mom has been a drug addict, alcoholic. Like they've been clean for 25 years. My mom, my dad is 30 something years. But, you know, we've been through a lot, man. My old man, I remember him working three jobs just to keep the lights on in our in our place, you know, and even still not being, being able to feed all, all of us, me and my brother and himself. He would have to sacrifice meals for himself for me and my little brother to eat, you know, and there'd be days where the power went out, the electricity went out, and we still had to find a way. And, you know, it's just a lot of ups and downs through everybody in my family, man. And to say that I'm one of the people in my family that is – battle through some of the ups and downs and to be here is uh I can't put it into words you know but just I don't know man that's a beautiful thing you are a very lucky man and you have uh you have persevered so much kudos to you um li- living li- living in the car did you ever think about you know maybe I shouldn't be chasing this dream should I go do something else like did you do you recall having a moment where you were close to quitting yeah, man. I mean, I, I mean, honest, man. And this is a story I, I've never told anybody. And I don't. I might. I'll tell this story because I think somebody. I want somebody to be able to find something in my story, and maybe help them through some hard times. And uh, there was a time where I gave up. I definitely gave up one time. Um, I tried to walk into traffic. Tried to walk into um, one of these busy uh, intersections in Schaumburg, Illinois, down the road from my gym, and. Um, Try to walk into the street and I try to, you know, in my in my life and um, that was a sc- that was a scary time for me because I've always been a really hardworking guy. I've never ever had any thoughts like that, you know. I never really thought about giving up, but things just got so hard, you know. And um, you know, I got kicked out of my gym because I was sneaking into the gym and I was wasn't telling anybody and sleeping there. And the owner kicked me out and I was just like, man, this is. This is all I got. This is the only thing I know how to do is um, compete and um, endure and um, just be relentless in everything I do. So when I'm when you're built like that, what else do you do? I tried to go to school that didn't work out. Tried to work a nine to five didn't work out. It just wasn't for me. And competing and doing this is what felt right to me. And uh, there's a couple of times where I thought it wasn't going to happen, you know. So uh, I. It was just like, well, shit, why am I wasting, I'm wasting space here. Why am I taking up air? And I flipped the switch in my head and was like, yep, this is the right decision. And try to end my own, per- my own life on my own terms. And uh, the person that was driving a car actually almost hit me. The woman almost hit me. She swerved, almost hit a pole. And uh, she got out of the car and flipped out. And I'm standing there and just shocked. Like, couldn't believe what was going on because I – I was thinking at that point I'd be done or ran over or hit or whatever in the hospital or something. And this woman gets out, losing her mind, screaming, yelling, and asking me what the fuck am I doing, excuse my language, and all of this. And, and then it, it flipped to me, like, man, I just tried to kill myself. And uh, I was so embarrassed by it, you know, I was so ashamed of myself that, uh, I don't know, a uh, switch flipped in. It was like, how do you go back and tell your family that you try to do this? How do you go back and say that, you know, you know, so I just took it and was like, you know what? You need to get your shit together and just lock in. And man, it just it didn't get easier from there. But I I just stuck, man. I stuck to it. And I, I didn't everything that went on. I just kept going, man. And I think uh, I think that's why I'm here today. You know, because I just I just refused to go down. You know. How long ago was that? This was. Three or four years ago. Oh wow! Not even that long ago. Yeah, and um, it was it was when I went, it was to turn pro. My very first pro fight. I was I was scheduled to fight Jr. or Jr. Himes, and uh, I just I just lost it. I don't know. I I lost I lost Mama J. Um, Lori Jackley. It was. A huge part of my life I lost her and just felt defeated and uh, didn't have money didn't have an idea what I was gonna do 
Um, and I just, I just fell apart. And uh, it's just crazy what the mind does in dark places, you know. Sometimes you get to dark places and you think you're just not one of those type of people, you know. And all of a sudden you find yourself making a horrible decision that you should never do. So, uh, I don't know. I'm here now. So, yeah. it is what it is. Thank goodness it, it all worked out, and, I, and I'm so um, genuinely happy for you. I remember us talking not that long ago about the old Will and, and, and trying to be happy and things like that, and I know right now you're emotional, but seeing your Instagram video last week of you just, you know, over the moon about finally realizing your dream of fighting in the UFC, I know that's not enough for you. You want to be the champion, but just getting to that point is a, is a beautiful thing, my man. So really, really happy for you. Thank you for sharing all that. Thank you for, for, for opening up and congratulations to you and your family. I can't wait. July 8th, it's going to be a great day. You versus Ross Pearson. Finally, Will Brooks makes it to the UFC. A beautiful story, a beautiful man. I appreciate it very much, Will. Thank you for the time here today. And again, congrats. Thanks, man. I wish I, I, I could have gave you a better interview, man. No. I got a little emotional. It just, it's a very uh, crazy time in my life right now. And it's a lot of blessings that just are piling up. And it's just, I don't know what to do with them. So, yeah. It's good to see things going back in your direction. Again, thank you for the time. I appreciate you squeezing us in. And uh, good luck in the next couple of weeks. And we'll see you out there in Vegas. I can't wait for it, my man. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. All right, there he is. Will Brooks stopping by. Wow, uh, amazing stuff from him. Um, very emotional stuff. Uh, perhaps now we get a, a better perspective as to why it means so much to him to be in the UFC and get a better perspective as to, you know, why he turned down that big contract from uh, Bellator, why it was just important for him to be there, to be fighting in the UFC, to be, you know, on the grandest stage, so to speak. Uh, that was, uh, that was, I had no idea that he had, he had been through that. So much credit to Will for changing his life, getting back on the right track and for now realizing his dream. And again, I know it's not just being in the UFC, but to get here when for a long time it didn't look like he was going to get here is a, is a pretty amazing thing. Congratulations to him. Congratulations to